Boy, a lot happened yesterday, including Bijan Robinson admitting to Dan Patrick he visited Philly and Tampa Bay only pre-draft. Also, he gave Howie Roseman one hell of a pitch as to why he's the perfect choice at number 10 overall. Matt Patricia is officially a part of the Philadelphia Eagles. Everyone on Twitter is crying. I'm not. And Jonathan Gannon, he refuses to take responsibility and has another terrible answer to the Eagles' failures in the Super Bowl. I'm Thomas Mott. This is The Thomas Mott Show. What's up, guys? Thomas Mott here. Welcome to the Thomas Mott Show on a Friday. Normally, Friday shows are a little bit quiet. They're not quiet today. We start with Bijan Robinson and move over to the rest of the big name stories happening in both the Philadelphia Eagles land and the National Football League. Let's start with Bijan Robinson. He was asked by Dan Patrick yesterday, Bijan, where have you gone for official visits? Here's what Bijan said. I've been to two teams, two teams, um, and like for, for official visits, to, to their city, only two teams. And those teams are? The Eagles and the Buccaneers of the two teams I met with. But I've been talking to, like, a lot of teams um, on Zoom and stuff and, and on calls. So, but, yeah, those are the two places that I've been. Isn't it crazy that he's only been to Philadelphia and Tampa Bay? Now, technically, he could have done a local visit to Dallas since he's in Austin, but wouldn't he have said he's gone to the Dallas Cowboys facility if he was actually had been to the Dallas Cowboys facility? It's just amazing that this big of a skill player and this heavily, I mean, dreamed about player, not just in Philadelphia, but elsewhere, has only been to two places. Now, you could totally draft him if he's not come to an official pre-draft visit. The Raiders could take him. You could have Atlanta take him. You could have any other team go out and watch could go ahead and take him but if you have 30 top 30 visits why would you not bring Bijan Robinson in if you were not interested in him I think this is fascinating I, I think this further throws fuel on the fire that either Philadelphia is bluffing heavily and hopes someone trades up to 10 to take Bijan that way they can go back and get more picks or the Eagles actually love Bijan Robinson and they're going to take Bijan Robinson like it's only one of those two things and I talked about it on the show yesterday it's hard to move back because if he's been to Philly and then Tampa and you want to go back to 16 and Tampa's sitting there at 19, there is a worry that the Bucks could go ahead and leapfrog you if they are in love with Bijan Robinson as well. What do you guys think? Do you think the Eagles love Bijan Robinson or do you think they're just bluffing? Let me know down below in the comments section. Either way, it'd be quite a bluff if you bring him all the way up there just to kind of not really want him overall. Plus, why do the Bucks want a running back? The Bucks have a lot more issues than just running back. They're not one player away from going to a Super Bowl with Kyle Trask or Baker Mayfield, but either way, this seems like pretty good stuff from Bijan Robinson. What's also interesting, an ESPN report Report, said this was the interaction between Bijan Robinson and Howie during their meeting. Howie, quote, why do I need to take you at number 10? Bijan, you're not going to get a running back. You're going to get a difference maker. Boy, that's uh, very similar to what Jalen Hurts told Howie Roseman in his pre-draft NFL combine meeting with the Eagles. Coach, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a difference maker. I'm a dog. Either Bijan watched that film or Bijan had a really, really good answer off the cuff. And if that's the case, goodness gracious, I mean, the love for this guy in Philadelphia is growing stronger and stronger. I am definitely one who thinks Bijan to Philadelphia would be absolutely fantastic. And don't just think running back. Think Debo Samuel. The combination of both, I think, is really good. Thumbs up for Bijan Robinson. Now, thumbs up for Jonathan Gannon no longer being a Philadelphia Eagle because he continues to just really have some, some, some bad answers when asked in press conferences about the Eagles lost to the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Here was him being asked yet again to own up to his mistakes. Um, but I'm, I'm very comfortable talking to the media. Philly is a very hard media market. Uh, we were 9-0, and and I did my presser, and they say, Coach, we want you fired. And I said, well, we're the no I said, we're the number one defense in the NFL right now in every statistical category. Why do you want me fired? You don't blitz enough. I said, well, we lead the league in sacks by 30-plus sacks. So if you want to come call the defense, and you can have at it. But, uh, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's cool. They have a job to do, and, the, and I understand that. See, it's an interesting reply because he's not wrong. He did have a successful defense last year, but the idea that he didn't dodge the media, he did dodge the media after the Super Bowl. He basically never got to be fully grilled by Philadelphia media following that nightmare of a performance against Patrick Mahomes, and that's always been the Gannon issue. The Gannon issue is not his overall numbers. His overall numbers are good. It's his overall numbers against good quarterbacks where he kind of gets shredded. I mean, you look at the bad quarterbacks against the Gannon defense, terrible at overall numbers. You look at the good ones, even, you know, consider Dak Prescott's performance against them in Dallas early on in the season last year. It, it speaks for itself. I'm, I'm very excited about what Sean Desai can do. We haven't heard much from him. I think we will more next week when we go ahead and get into OTAs and obviously further on this offseason we get to training camp, but 
I, I, I'm done with the Ganon experience. I'm ready for something new, and hopefully Desai can change it up a little bit than the vanilla stuff that won us a lot of games, but lost us a lot of big games as well. Okay, let's move over here to what I thought was the funniest part of the joint press conference between Howie Roseman and Nick Sirianni. Overall, a good press conference, and they were asked about B. John Robinson and a running back at 10, and Howie put him in threw more, more smoke onto the fire, or more, you know, f flames onto the fire, fan the flames, if you will, essentially saying, you know, we don't... No one knows what we're going to do at number 10, and we value running back a lot higher than people think, and so on and so forth. But the best moment came when Nick Sirianni was asked by Howie how to pronounce the new wide receiver for the Eagles. Here's what happened. I did about Quez. I'm, ex I'm really excited um, with our, you know, with our new addition. Pronounce his name. I can't. Or, yeah. <laughs> Alameda Zacchaeus. I only know that because I live in Atlanta and he was an Atlanta Falcon. That's the only reason I know how to say his name. Still struggle to spell it all the time. But Alameda Zacchaeus, the new wide receiver three. I also saw that there was some Quez Watkins drama on Twitter talking about you know, seemingly upset that they signed Alameda Zacchaeus. Quez, we got to grow up a little bit here. You've been basically handed either the number two or number three wide receiver spot your entire time in Philadelphia, and you've never done much with it, and you've dropped a lot of key passes. I don't want to hear anything about Quez Watkins complaining that it's unfair we signed Alameda Zacchaeus when Quez can still go out there and battle and win the job. And if you think he's, thinks he's better, then prove it out on the football field. I, I, Quez has no, no area to talk here when he's definitely been lackluster so far as a wide receiver three and an offense where he's never facing the opponent's top cornerbacks. Like, ever, ever, ever facing the opponent's top cornerbacks, I, I really think that Quez doesn't have a lot of ground to go ahead and stand on, and I think Zacchaeus has a really good chance being a natural slot guy of beating him out. Okay, let's go over here to the Matt Patricia drama. So, obviously, Adam Schefter on Twitter officially announced that the uh, Matt Patricia is the new Eagles senior defensive assistant, um, and it's it, it's been brought to my attention that a lot of people on Twitter are unhappy about this. Now, I understand why, and I understand why simply due to the fact that Matt Patricia and Darius Slay have a little bit of history of butting heads, and Darius Slay famously, you know, a couple years ago when he was 29 and a part of the Lions, basically admitted that, you know, we butted heads and he kind of made fun of me during practice and it, it, it lost a lot of respect for him overall. But I'm asking you right now, if you think this is such a bad hire, do you think Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman are dumb? Like, like, do you truly think that Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman don't know that that's an actual thing? Don't know that Slay and Patricia have had some butting heads and they didn't further vet that process before bringing him on? Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. Look at listen to Nick Sirianni talking about Patricia when asked about him yesterday. His resume <laughs> speaks for itself. Um, it gives you a, a great uh, a mind in there that, that's done it at the highest level, uh, you know, and so it gives you great um, ability to... Um, to bounce ideas off of with the defensive staff and then also gives me another uh, former head coach that I can bounce ideas off of as well um, you know with things which which I think would be very helpful and yet people are complaining about that again do you really think the Eagles are that dumb to where they said oh Darius Slay doesn't like Matt Patricia and eh, we don't care about Darius Slay you know screw that guy bring in Matt Patricia no, not at all. They obviously vetted this. Sierra and I talked about the fact they spoke to Darius Slay about the situation. It's not like uh, Patricia is calling defenses. It's not like he's leading, you know, meetings in rooms. He's going to be a senior defensive assistant, which means that he is going to be an assistant and assist the defensive coordinator in any way possible. The more minds you have in one room trying to figure out how to stop modern offenses, the better. And this is a guy who has done a pretty good job defensively in the past, not as a head coach, defensively as having some pretty darn good defenses. And if we just rip Jonathan Gannon for not being unique enough, you can't rip Matt Patricia or the Eagles for bringing in another voice who could give them a unique take or unique perspective on playing defense. These are grown men. The idea that this is going to impact Slay or that Patricia's a bad guy, he wouldn't have gotten this far in his NFL career if players all around the league hated him and he was not considered a smart defensive coach at all. So I'm out on the Patricia hate. This seems like such much to do about nothing. We're bored on a Friday afternoon. He's going to be absolutely fine and might actually help out Sean Desai, again, to have a more unique defense that hopefully can stop some of the better offensive weapons and offensive quarterbacks or quarterbacks on really good offenses in the entire National Football League. Let me know what you guys think about the Matt Patricia side. Again, I have no issue with it. I think it's fine. I think it's going to be a very, very fine relationship and might even be better than people realize. Although, because he's more behind the scenes, you're not going to see it externally in terms of front-facing to the media. So we shall see. Okay, plenty more stuff happening. I keep saying that every single Friday, but I'm telling you, show tomorrow. It's going to be a wild next week. And when we say wild next week, it's going to be the wildest week in football until training camp. And then training camp gets really wild. But this will be the wildest week in football. I would love to get to 11,000 subs by the start of the NFL draft. If you want to help out, hit the sub button down below. Follow me on Twitter, at Real Thomas Mott, for the latest in breaking NFL news. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thomas Mott, this has been the Thomas Mott Show. Well,